So now we're on our third construction, which is how to construct a perpendicular bisector of a segment. And of course, this requires us to remember what a perpendicular bisector is. Uh, we know what line segments are, right? And a perpendicular means right angle, and bisect means to cut in half. So when I'm constructing a perpendicular bisector, I am trying to find a line that basically cuts this line in half and intersects at a 90 degree angle, okay? Now, the steps to this, I'm going to show after I do it. Uh, you'll see part of it here, but uh, I need the space to do the construction. All right, so hopefully I didn't pick a line segment that was too long. So the first thing you have to do is you have to adjust your compass, and you'll notice every time I use the compass, I, I adjust the wrong direction. Oy, very annoying. All right. Um, so I'm going to adjust my radius so that it's this length here, okay? So I gotta keep adjusting, keep adjusting, and it looks about right. Now I test it, I test my uh, length of my radius by putting the point on one line segment and drawing a tiny arc and making sure I hit that other line segment, okay? So it does, and so this is the proper, proper radius for this perpendicular bisector, okay? So what I'm gonna do, it's really simple actually, all I'm going to do is want to put the point on one of the end points of the line segment, boink, and I'm going to swing a super huge arc, a major arc or a semicircle, maybe even a little bit bigger than a semicircle, at least a semicircle, right? And notice, of course, since it's the radius, it's going to hit that point A. And then I'm going to switch where the point is. I'm going to move the point to the other end point of that line segment, and I'm going to swing another giant arc semi-circle size, right? And I'm sorry this is really light, but you should see my construction marks. It looks like parts of two circles that are intersecting, and that's really what it is, right? I have two circles that are intersecting, but I don't want the whole circle, I just want these little pieces of the circle, right? So here are the steps. Well, I'm not done yet, actually. Hold on. <laughs> Jump in the gun there. All right, so now that I have those two arcs, you see that they intersect up here and down here. And those two points are the critical points for this construction. I gotta find out where those two circles intersect. So I'm gonna line up my straight edge and I'm going to draw the line between those two points. And this line here, I'm gonna label line one. This is the perpendicular bisector of AB. So here are the steps written out. Make sure you copy them for whenever you need to construct a perpendicular bisector of a line segment. So this construction of a perpendicular bisector gives me a lot more than just that line. Um, if I need to create a midpoint of a given line, I can find the midpoint using this construction. I just don't need to draw this whole line in, I just need to find where that point is and then mark it as a midpoint. Um, of course, if I need a right angle at that point, I can use my perpendicular uh, bisector construction to get a right angle but I also get something else. I get, I get some triangles in here too. And these are actually very important triangles, right? So I'm gonna adjust this here to get the radius that I need, right? Okay, now, so I'm gonna use this compass to measure this distance here, right? So we use compasses to measure distances and that's, a, that's about how long that is. And I'll notice this point to this point is the same distance, right? Because I, they're circles, right? I was in the radii are the same. So, and this distance from here to here is also the same. So, if I were to connect the endpoints with the point where the arcs uh, intersect at either the top or the bottom, like up here, and up here then I just created an equilateral triangle. This length is equal to that length is equal to that length because they're all radii of identical circles. Right? So I can create an equilateral triangle that way. And as a matter of fact, I can create more than equilateral triangles. I can create isosceles triangles as well. Because if I pick any point on the perpendicular bisector, like a point down here, 
right? And I connect and I connect the endpoints to that point on that perpendicular bisector. And I get my compass out for measuring. And uh, we'll see why bow compasses can take a little bit of time to work with. Yeah. Okay, so this length here is the same as that length there. So if I take any point on the perpendicular bisector and I connect that point to the two endpoints of that line segment, I will get isosceles triangles. And so any point on here, until I get to the points where the construction, constructed circles intersect, I get an equilateral triangle, and the rest are isosceles. Yay! Which actually takes us to a conjecture, a very important conjecture. It is called the perpendicular bisector conjecture. It says if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then the point is equidistant from the endpoints. And we just showed that. As I said in previous videos, if I have a conjecture, I want to always ask myself, is the converse true? And so if I think about this scenario where I have some point that is not on a line segment, but that point is the same distance away from both of the endpoints of a line segment, so AP is equal to BP in terms of length, um, is this point P on the perpendicular bisector? Now this is something that we're going to prove later on in the year, but for now we're just going to like do a little thought experiment. So if this point is not on the perpendicular bisector, it would be at some sort of angle, like so, and there, if it's if it's at an angle, there's no way to get those those side lengths to be the same, right? So if it's not at a right angle, then one of the line segments is going to be longer than the other. So actually, the converse is also true. That means that if I have a point that I know is equidistant from two endpoints of a line segment, that point has to be on the perpendicular bisector. Okay, so that means I can draw this extra line in because of this conjecture. This conjecture says that I can draw this extra line segment in and make it a right angle. I know that's true because of this conjecture, C6.